Um, so the student that was um, intended to be for a male uh, reader. Um, but the boy could have read, this is a middle class boy, um, could have read um, what was written there and passed the exam. Um, the boys and girls um, who are no longer um, middle class, they are all boys and girls um, uh, who go to school now, could read everything that is written there and fail the exam of service because um, what is written there doesn't tell them what's going to tell them. So there has been, um, in that period from uh, 1959 to um, 1988, um, a period roughly of um, 30 years, there's been a, a, an enormous shift. Uh, the times of uh, 2001, which I showed you, um, uses images differently to this, um, but it uses images, but um, it's in these kinds of um, uh, texts, um, in these kinds of media, um, and these kinds of sites, the education sites, where you see what has actually happened um, in, in terms of writing this. It's not that writing doesn't exist there, and it's not that writing isn't important, but writing does something very specific. Um, um, I called it yesterday a kind of pedagogic framing, that it, it's, it's what, what we did last week, kind of framing like that, what shall we do this week, what is the best way of doing, what we are going to be doing this week. Um, but if you want to know uh, what a circle is like, um, do not bother reading the text, um, but do look very closely at what um, the images are. And also drew attention yesterday to um, the two kinds of image which you have, um, have there. One which is um, uh, relatively realist, um, and the other which is um, highly abstract. The difference between topographical and topological uh, representation, where the topological um, is generalization and abstraction. Um, and where the topographical um, is, um, as you might find in the circle, when you unscrew it and the thing on the wall and look behind it. Now, in that change um, that writing has undergone, if, um, if this page here, which we just looked at, is relatively typical and relatively characteristic, that much information which was previous, previously carried in writing is now being carried in image, if that is the case, um, then you have to ask, what will be the effect on writing? Yeah. Will there be an effect on writing? Um, writing seemingly now carries um, less information. Um, and if less information um, has an effect on syntax, well, what is that effect? Um, and here I've, I've got two sentences, or rather two, um, uh, sorry, two paragraphs, or uh, no, actually, figure six here from uh, the uh, example from 1935 is a single sentence. No, it's two sentences. I apologize, I'm getting confused here. Two sentences, and uh, figure seven, which is from the 1988 textbook, um, is a number of sentences, but I would like you to attend now to the change in what sentences are like um, in these two examples. In 1936, remember, uh, language carries all the information that needs to be carried, or at least that seems to be the assumption. In 1988, um, images carry the information which is um, curriculum terms central. Now, those of you who are slightly linguistically trained, I'll invite you to count the number of clauses um, in the sentence that I shall read out to you. From 1936. Yeah. Um, um, when the <laughs> current, uh, that also didn't happen in 1936. Nor in 1988. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's just astonishing what that. Uh, but anyway, um, when a current is passed through the coil, the direction indicated in the figure, we can show <laughs> by applying Fleming's left hand rule that the left hand side of the coil will tend to go down. Well, depending on your on your theory of grammar, um, you'd come up um, with uh, somewhere between probably uh, five and seven clauses. Is that right? That is, if you count every um, verb-like item as actually a verb in disguise, and it, uh, if a clause is defined by a verb, um, 
you can sort of uh, move backwards from there. And uh, it's between five and seven clauses. The other clause is um, a simple sentence from lay person's terms. So what you've got um, is actually something which is quite complex. And you've got, um, if a clause is, um, is, is a kind of a, like a little snapshot of an event in the world, what you've got is, um, is a, comp of a, a compound of between five and seven snapshots put together into a single entity framed by the sentence. Yeah, so now, I mean, uh, think back to Anna Trapnell, uh, and think back to Milton, and think back to, um, or maybe forward to what this is now. This is saying that we can put a number of uh, <coughs> events in the world kind of together <coughs> by reason of um, um, some kind of um, thematic um, consistency or similarity. But we need to have um, a syntax to kind of integrate it so it makes a kind of coherent whole. Yeah? It's a complex. Um, um, syntactic thing, it's a complex um, conceptual thing, um, and maybe you could make inferences about the com complex conceptual thing demanding eventually a complex um, cognitive organization to deal with. That, that would be a kind of a way of reason. Now, count the sentences, um, uh, count the clauses in the sentences I'm going to read now. In your first circuits, use torch valves joined with wires. uses the same basic ideas. If you look inside a computer, there are not many wires or torch bulbs. The wires and bulbs have been replaced by electronic devices like transistors, chips, and light emitting diodes. That should be diodes and piping uh, and motor strength. Um, but what you can see is a massive change um, in terms of the syntax, um, the internal syntax of the sentence away from the complexity of um, um, the syntax of uh, 1936, which of course was listed um, and all that um, with the kind of um, uh, early 60s and maybe even late 60s, um, to a kind of simplified syntax. Yeah. And the question one asks is, um, if complex syntax meant complex uh, conceptual structure meant possibly a response um, uh, of um, complex cognition, um, now you've got simple um, um, entities, not uh, complex conceptually, um, and maybe not therefore calling forth um, the same um, cognitive complexity. And that's, that's the kind of a, a, a way that um, I want to think about that. Now, um, that of course would not be the end of the story, uh, because whereas you've got um, um, relatively simple syntax now, but at least relatively simple sentence syntax, uh, what you now have is a new um, complexity in making sense of the conjunction between image and, and right. Okay, so that um, in one way it's become easier, in another way it's become really complex. Okay, so, and, and that's um, how, how we I think we need to think about that. Um, so that's a kind of a little trajectory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I interpret the two previous examples, Figure six, description nineteen thirty six, to me is about the descriptive nature of the text is attempting to build a mental model for the yes. reader. Yes. Whereas seven uh, doesn't really make sense unless there is an image present. It's sort of illustrating being explicit possibly things within the image the reader may not necessarily attend to. Although I think that direct reference to Mama doesn't really exist in, in the second one. It, uh, it, it refers to past experience. In your first circuit, they obviously built a circuit um, mm -hmm. a week ago. You use torch box, and so it refers to experience. You're right, it's sort of vague in that sense. It sort of refers. But the sentence, uh, modern electrical equipment uses the same basic ideas, doesn't. Um, if you look inside a computer, that also doesn't.